Welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Sports Roundtable. I'm Derek Van Riper, your host, joined today by Rotowire President Peter Shanky. Pete, how you doing today? Doing great. And also joined by managing editor Chris List. Chris, what's going on? What's up, Derek? Not too much. If you like uh, like what you see today, you can check us out Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern on XM87, Sirius 210, Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Guys, it's been a crazy NFL offseason. Everything's been condensed into really two weeks so far. Let's talk about some of the free agent movers. Of course, Kevin Cobb to Arizona was one of the big trades that actually happened early on during this process. Do you like Cobb now that he goes to the desert, has some job security, and has Larry Fitzgerald as a top weapon? What do you think, Chris? Uh, I think it's not as good as what he would have been last year on the Eagles had he kept that job because that's a system in the NFL, but uh, it, it could be worse. He does have Fitzgerald. I think Ken Wisenhunt's going to want to run the ball. I don't know if he has the horse to do it. We'll see how Ryan Williams does. But I think Cobb is sort of like a 15th to 17th overall QB, someone solid, but not someone who I think is going to win your league for you. Yeah, definitely uh, I think a solid tier two guy with some upside. Might take him a little extra time to learn that offense, of course, with a shortened off season. Not as much time to get acclimated there as he moves out of Philadelphia. Another former Eagles quarterback was on the move here, Pete. Heading to your Minnesota Vikings, we have Donovan McNabb going to take over the starting job there. Does McNabb bounce back from just a terrible season in Washington? I think there's reason to think so. I mean, last year in Washington was just such an odd year where he got benched and then was given a contract extension. I mean, his relationship with the Redskins and the head coach was just bizarre. So you can kind of write it off a little bit. He did throw more interceptions than touchdowns and um, you know, obviously he's on the decline, but he's perhaps got better weapons in Minnesota. He's got a star running back in Adrian Peterson, so he'll have a running game to take pressure off the pass. He's still got some weapons with Percy Harvin and Shanko at tight end, even though uh, Sidney Rice has left. So uh, I think he can rebound. I think he could, you know, he could be a quarterback who could finish in the top 12, you know, and be a, a you know, a low-end uh, fantasy starter, maybe a, a good backup. I mean, I think that's kind of his upside in that system. Hey, who does have a good relationship with the Redskins? I mean, think about all the everyone who's in Washington. It's like a, a horrible mess there. I can't. And so some of the guys are questioning, you know, management over there. It's crazy. Yeah, their quarterback situation is ugly. Yeah, they are redefining dysfunction right now in D.C. and that's it's a pretty ugly situation. Now, of course, McNabb is taking the spot vacated by a combination of Brett Favre, Tavares Jackson, and Joe Webb. But Tavares Jackson lands on his feet in Seattle. I mean, Pete, you and I have seen a lot of him play over the last few years. Chris, you seem to be a little bit higher on Jackson than most. What is it you like about him? I just think Pete has an irrational hatred for uh, <laughs> Tavares Jackson. And, you know, he actually was good before this year before he got thrust into an offense that was built around Brett Favre. And, uh, you know, I think that actually, he can, you know, he's going to run for a couple hundred yards. Uh, he's going to, you know, I don't know how good of a passer he's going to be, but he's going to get a chance to do it since he's a starter now. He's got good weapons, Sidney Rice, Mike Williams, they just signed Zach Miller. They got John Carlson the tight end. So he's got a deep roster of receivers to throw to, and he's going to get you points on the ground. We'll see, you know, if he can develop as a pocket passer. One more quarterback we should talk about. Bruce Gretkowski could end up getting most of the starts this year in Cincinnati. I think the Bengals have one of the more underrated receiving cores in the league. I also think it's possible their defense is going to be terrible. Do you guys see him as a potential QB, two if you're in a 14-team league? Maybe, you know, I mean, I don't know how long to keep the job. They're talking about Andy Dalton playing. But, yeah, I think if he gets the job and Marvin Lewis is not an idiot and just says, you know what, Cedric Benson is a potter. We're not going to win anyway. Let's not. Let's at least do something for the fans, do something to build the franchise. Let's just throw the ball down the field. This guy, you know, is a freak. He's 6'4". He's got great speed. Just throw the ball down the field and see what will happen. If they do that, uh, I think Gradkowski can be interesting. If they try to do what they did last year, and force Cedric Benson to get three yards of carry, uh, it'll just be ugly, and you're not going to want any part of that passing game. Let's talk about Chad Ochocinco. He does have a good quarterback now that he's moving to New England. That was one of the biggest surprises so far of the offseason. I'm concerned that he's one of those guys that because he's in that high-powered New England offense, the ADP before, before I can get him is going to rise to the point where I just don't want him anymore. What are your guys' expectations for him in New England? We'll start with you, Chris. Well, I got him ranked, I think, 22nd among receivers, which is, you know, pretty hot. Right around where Sidney Rice is, actually, maybe a little ahead of Sidney Rice. Uh, I just think he almost can't go wrong. There's not a lot of competition at receiver there. I mean, you have Wes Welker, who's a little slot guy. He's not really going to cut into the downfield target. Theon Branch was ill-suited to be a downfield guy. So, really, you got a couple tight ends. But the only guy who ever really stretched the field uh, is Ocho Sink. I don't know if he's too old to do that now. But uh, I think there's a chance he could be very good with Tom Brady. I agree. I'm not going to take him in the top 15 receivers just because he's there, but, you know, it just depends what the market is for him. I would take him if he splits. I, th I think he's going to be good this year. 
The only thing that really worries me about is that the two tight ends have kind of established themselves as, as red zone threats. So, um, you know, now it's another another guy in the mix. If he was more of an established red zone guy, the clear number one, uh, that would be, you know, I think I would like it. But otherwise, it just depends on the price. I like him as a, as a cheap upside play, but like Liz said, if you're having to pay, uh, you know, top 15 uh, price for him, then, not, you know, then, it, then suddenly he's not as appealing. One last receiver we should talk about. Roy Williams goes from Dallas to Chicago, reunites with Mike Martz. With Mark, he had his best season of his career back in Detroit, back in 2006. you got to go in the Wayback Machine to even really get on those numbers. Do you guys like him as Jay Cutler's top target? Go ahead, Chris. What do you think? I can't like him. I mean, the problem is, okay, so this guy's big and he's fast and he has all the physical tools to be a number one receiver in the NFL, but he got hurt early on in his career a lot, so when he had that one good year in Detroit. And he goes to Dallas, he's second fiddle to T.O. and then Miles Austin. And can you get it back? Can you be gone four years from being a good player and suddenly be a good player again? Maybe. I don't know. I like the situation. I will take him. I have around 35 among receivers. I like him there for the upside. But, you know, also because I just don't think they have good receivers there in Johnny Knox, and I think those guys are kind of scrubbed. So he's had a chance. I just don't know if it's too late for him to get it back. Yeah, just because just of the volume in Chicago, because they're going to throw the ball so much, pretty much any guy that's going to emerge as the number one guy that you're going to want to grab. Um, but, you know, Roy Williams, uh, you know, I'm not that excited about him given his failures in the past, but you know, any guy, anybody who's going to get the ball in Chicago, you know, you got to look at it as a potential number two or number three receiver for your fantasy team. Yeah, maybe Jake Cutler turns the corner in his second year in Martha's system. It could be the uh, the key ingredient there, whether or not he's throwing picks or if he's actually finding his receiver's hand instead of the DBs. Let's talk about the running backs real quickly. Marion Barber, Reggie Bush, Darren Sproles, Willis McGahee, and Ricky Williams now among the veteran backs that have changed teams. Do you see any of those guys having a significant increase in value with their new clubs, or do you see a lot of guys that are already stuck in timeshares and, and certain situational opportunities? Uh, they're just going to hurt the value of other people. They're not really going to have that much value themselves. They're going to be goal-line vultures. You know, they'll be worth drafting backups. So, I mean, if you had Michelle McCoy, I'd draft Ronnie Brown, or if you had uh, Ray Rice, I would draft Ricky Williams. Yeah, Reggie Bush may get a little bit more activity in a PPR league. You know, that, that could definitely pay off. Same with Sproles. But I don't see either one of them taking a quantum leap, you know, where they suddenly became a afterthought before, and now they're like a top-tier fantasy starter. Um, none of those guys, unfortunately, really, that, their change in scenery didn't, uh, didn't change things. Yeah, I think I agree with Chris's take. This, these guys are just going to hurt the value of guys like No Sean Moreno in particular. I think that, you know, McGahee might be the guy that just gets all the carries in close, much like he did in Baltimore. So not much to be excited about from, uh, the, free agent, from the free agent running backs that have moved so far. You're watching the Roadwire Fantasy Sports Roundtable. Coming up next, we're going to break down this year's rookie class.